we're here with Arculeus, and Arculeus is seen into actionable intelligence. Arculeus, a Canon group, launched about a year ago from incubation, and today is launching their product into market. The Arculeus video cloud platform combines enterprise video and IoT sensor data, leveraging cloud technologies and analytics to turn information streams into insights for businesses, optimizing operations, and improving safety. So with that, I'll hand it over to Sharif and Ben to tell you more. Thank you, Lauren. You're welcome. Cheers. Good afternoon, everyone. Oh, seriously? Come on. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. So I am Sharif Mohammed, principal engineer. I run the engineering department for Arcules. I have uh, Ben here, who's our cloud and security architect. So we get to blame him for everything that's not working. Pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> um, clicker, come on. There we go. So what do we do? So we, um, our roots really start from cloud, uh, no, sorry, not cloud, uh, video surveillance on premise. And the idea was is that we wanted to take that and put that into the cloud. And with that thought, we were kind of building out the product and everything. And we realized that you could do so much more than just video surveillance in the cloud. And with especially the power of AI and uh, IoT and that correlation of the data, we realized there's so much more there. So we're boldly trying to create a new category by the name of Video IoT as a Service. Video Cloud IoT as a Service, excuse me. And what we're going to talk about today is real. It's not vaporware. This is, these are a few screenshots of our product, our dashboard, and some of the insights that you're able to see when you are clicking around in the, in the application. So I want you guys to dream a little bit with me, all right? Imagine if there was a way for us to be able to detect a school shooting when it's happening or prior to the fact that it happens through sound and other IoT devices that we can lock down the school immediately and react immediately? Or what if there was a lost child at an amusement park and we could find that lost child based on what color shirt it was wearing or pants or whatever, or even a bracelet that it may have through beacon technology? Thank you. All right. Uh, what if we're able to maximize the ad revenue that retailers have through real-time shopper analytics to see how the shoppers are actually interacting with the products and within the store, their traffic, and all that. So our goal is to revolutionize video and IoT intelligence and bring that together from this era of unstructured data, very forensic and after the fact type of thing to more of a structured and preventative and uh, a way to be able to react on, on the spot. Let me explain a little bit more about what the unstructured versus structured data is. So unstructured data is very blobby and homogenous, just like water flowing. It's just going through into the cloud. You can't really do anything with it unless you have some sort of human element, human interaction with it to tell you what it is that's actually happening. Now, there are ways to be able to detect disturbances in that field, such as motion detection, but it still doesn't give you enough. You still need a human there to tell you, oh, that was just a bug, uh, like literally a bug flying on the, on the camera, or it was a blurry camera screen, or it was actually a human doing something, right? And again, it's, it's reactive. It happens after the fact. So with the advent of AI and bringing everything up into the cloud, we're able to add more structure to that data, be able to tell you what is actually in the video that you are seeing. Such as in this scenario, we're able to see there are six people running. You know, that's great. We're able to know that there are actually six people there. We know it's not a blurry screen. We know there's no smudge there or something, but we know there are six people. However, they're running. Why are they running? We don't know exactly why. We still don't have enough context to be able to react to that, right? So we need a little bit more. That's where the IoT comes in and being able to correlate all of that data together. So in this particular scenario, we know that six people were running. We know they weren't exercising because it seemed like there was a big spike in temperature, right? 
We don't know what that spike in temperature was because of. It could be a fire. More than likely, it's a fire, right? But we're going to be proactive and go sound the alarm so we can get more and more people out of the building to save lives and things like that. And then after the fact, we could always figure out, forensics-wise, who, what, where, why, and when, right? So, okay. Now, as I said, all of this stuff you can actually do today with our product. Again, this is a quick demo of our product on the left there with all that scrolling. You see our dashboard and our web portal where you can manage settings and things like that, also view video. The middle portion, that is our thick client that is used by 24-7 operations um, that you can see actual real-time AI events come in through. And then on the, the, the furthest uh, right side, my right, that is our IO, iOS or Android um, app where you could actually view live video. So with that, I'm going to pass it over to Ben, and he'll talk to you guys about architecture and high level, how we do this. Cool. Thank you. Cool. Hey, guys. Uh, so we use a variety of technologies on our platform. We uh, have Golang, Node.js, React, uh, Python for TensorFlow stuff, uh, as well as some C code. Um, we're kind of polyglot. We kind of give our engineers the ability to use the tools that they need to solve the problem, rather than just trying to smash a square peg in a round hole. It doesn't really work very well when you try and get into that situation. <laughs> um, uh, we also use Kubernetes. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit more about that in the next few slides. Um, Kubernetes is awesome. I don't know whether you guys are familiar with it, but uh, GKIE, and uh, we also happen to have Kubernetes at the edge as well. Um, very interesting. And then finally, obviously, why we're all here is Google Cloud. Um, they've been awesome to us as partners. Um, we've, we have literally two, three pages worth of um, requests or problems that we're trying to solve, and Trish and Juan over there have been awesome, been able to solve all of our problems. Um, the other reason why we've also used Google Cloud, um, we, we tested out several different cloud platforms. Uh, can't mention their names. But uh, at the end of the day, it came down to speed and reliability, and Google won hands down. There was no question about it. There was, uh, when, when you're dealing with video, such a high, intense kind of uh, data flow, there's nothing, one drop packet or, oh, it's 10 seconds too late by the time it gets there, we can't react quick enough. And so that's why we chose Google as our cloud partner. Cool. So a quick overview of our solution. We have a variety of uh, methods of input, I guess is the best way of putting it. Um, so we have uh, a mobile app, which is mostly used by our security guards, just uh, roaming security guards. They're running around trying to figure out what's going on. They'll get notifications and alarms to their cell phone. Uh, we have our web client. Um, a lot of different things are done through there. Pretty much the entire, anything you can do in our thick client, you can also do in our web client. Um, we have a thick client, which is more traditional. That's where you have kind of uh, your... Um, Normal sort of uh, trying to think of the word. I can't remember it. I'm sorry. Huh? Security operations, Security operations center. I can't remember the word, but it's all good. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, mostly um, they'll be using that product. Um, high, lots of volume video. Normally 32 cameras up on one big screen. Um, and then we kind of get down into the IoT side of things and the, the actual device side, right? Uh, so cameras, um, as we are um, effectively out of incubation from Milestone, um, we actually support about 6,000 cameras, uh, primarily through the OnViv protocol, which if you're familiar with security cameras, um, that's very large for us, along with a variety of very specific device drivers for the cameras. Our IoT device platform um, is completely extensible. Um, although it's not fully open platform yet, uh, it will eventually be open platform, so we can plug into any IoT vendor on-prem, as well as potentially cloud-to-cloud -cloud integrations in the future. Access control is another huge one, obviously being able to react, lock down doors, or open up doors, or uh, video verification, hey, someone passed through this door, hey, what's going on? It's pretty interesting. Um, and then finally, our third-party integrations. Um, it's not fully open yet. We are planning on releasing a fully open API platform. It's very interesting um, being able to integrate with other sources of data. We don't know what they are yet, but that's where like, being able to pull in like, unstructured data into structured data and having all these feeds of structured data, we can do so much more, whether it be analytics over the top of that or whether it's just um, reactive elements. OK, so uh, here's our architecture. We, um, 
GK in the cloud, obviously, I talked about before. And also, we actually run Kubernetes at the edge. And that's something I can kind of say for this slide. Uh, Kubernetes is very, very interesting. Um, it allows us to deploy microservices at the edge as well as in the cloud. And then you're much quicker at reacting uh, from a DevOps standpoint, being able to fix certain things, but also being able to deploy upgrades on the fly. They go down, they come up with, with very little interruption to the customer. There's no, no longer you're downloading firmware updates or Windows updates. It's all kind of just done live and switched, hot swappable. It's great. Um, not being able to do that on a security platform is insanely useful. That's the best way I can put it. Cool. So a uh, quick high-level high view. Uh, we have a video microservice uh, that sits on the edge. That's actually where all our camera drivers live. So it's all of our data in, uh, which is unstructured, um, which then pushes it to the video proxy. Our video proxy then um, manages. Uh, we use Google Storage. We store all that uh, stuff there. Uh, we ha then have our AI ML flow and workflow. Um, we convert that unstructured data to structured data, as Sharif said earlier. We also have our IoT devices. Again, all the drivers and devices live down there at the edge. Um, all the devices connect on-prem or in, on the cloud. It does live on the GKE side as well, but primarily right now it's all at the gateway. We use Cloud IoT Core. Um, obviously, that's kind of one of the big things here. Um, it saves us about a month of development time building off of IoT Core. Um, it's already hardened. It's already secure. We use the MQTT socket base, if anyone's interested. We don't use the HTTP push. Um, it, it, it just had all the features we needed at the time, and the fact that it automatically supported private public key exchange and all that stuff, it just made, made so much sense. Um, obviously, with Cloud IoT, we use PubSub to transport all of our messages, uh, similar to RabbitMQ and Kafka, um, just messaging platform. And then the next one is our processor. Um, how many of you guys have heard of GDPR? <laughs> how many of you have to deal with it in like actual real life? Yeah. <laughs> um, so one of the interesting things with IoT data is we don't actually know what kind of data is actually coming in. Um, we've built a platform with our drivers. We actually have to categorize that data before it comes in, and we actually have to parse out and make sure that we can utilize it in certain situations. So we've got a whole framework and legal framework around this. Um, separate pieces which allow us to say, hey, if this data is coming in from Germany, it can't leave the country, so we have to store it in a German data center. That kind of like rules-based engine based on geolocation. Um, it's pretty intense. It was a pretty interesting find. Um, so that's how we kind of handled that, just by classifying the data and then being able to move it. And then based on that classification, depending on what we can do with it, we can either store it, we can just drop it, um, we store all of our historical data in BigQuery. Uh, that's where we can do statistical analysis like over time. Um, but we also then also like to pass some of that information onto our real-time engine, which is an in-house built function as a service style system. Um, we can choose to send it to this or not. Uh, obviously, anyone familiar with uh, some of the legal ramifications of GDPR, you may not be able to pass it to users, so we may actually have to just drop it before it even gets there. Um, so the real-time engine, what it can do, it will take in multiple sensors. So it could be coming from our AIML services, it could be coming from our IT services, and we can kind of, based on a series set of rules, or potentially re-plumb it back into any kind of engine. So it's kind of an action, an anything-to-anything -anything engine in a weird sense of way, but we can kind of take in lots of different types of data and then either reprocess it in a different form or then take that form and then action upon it back out either via an IoT data sensor or um, change a configuration somewhere on our platform to help provide more actionable insights. 